Welcome inside UNC Charlotte and the 49er Democracy Experience. The university is engaged in Charlotte 2012, and in this special report, we check in with more of the 49ers who are experiencing the activities firsthand. We visit with a student who was a delegate to the other major party convention in Tampa. And we hear from Charlotte leaders who gathered at our university to answer the question, why Charlotte as the host of a presidential nominating convention? At venues throughout the city, day and night, 49ers are volunteers attending seminars and job shadowing with national media, nonprofits, and government and political organizations. This picture here is actually in the one of the studios that they had set up in Gold's Gym, they being Bloomberg Press, so where their actual anchors were in interviewing different politicians and uh, prestigious people and things like that. And so it was so awesome to get to sit there since that's my dream is one day be a political commentator um, and sit there and take the picture. And the person that I was job showing, Paul, who's the um, president of Bloomberg Business Week, he actually came up with the idea, hey, why don't you go sit over there and I'll take your picture. So I thought that was really awesome um, how down to earth he was and uh, supportive and that was a perfect photo op. Um, here's a more enlarged shot of the actual studio that I had my picture taken in. Um, again, it was just awesome to me to see how they did this total transformation of the entire Gold's Gym. It didn't look like a gym at all um, within a matter of days. My first tweet was when we got our passes, that was thrilling. And just being able to walk in and seeing, like, I didn't realize that they had transformed the Gold's Gym into that amazing venue. Like, they had, it was just completely done up. And when we got our passes, it was just made it, it just made it official. So me and Ashley tweeted our picture. And um, so all of our friends got to comment and see what we were doing. I've seen the preparations and the media welcome party and that was all very interesting. And then the night, basically the night before the whole week started walking around Uptown Charlotte and seeing the streets so calm and quiet and then the very next day having everything be so hectic is really, it was kind of funny to watch that evolve so quickly. Well, this is the control room for the Bloomberg Television um, Studios that I got to shadow one of the people who's kind of in charge there. And I got to see what kind of all goes into putting on a live TV show in this hectic environment. There's another 49er watching the convention with great interest and a special perspective. Meet Daniel Rufty, who represented the 12th Congressional District as a delegate to the Republican National Convention in Tampa. Police everywhere. That is what I saw in Tampa, and that is exactly what I see here. And these conventions are the easiest way to get involved. You show up, and you vote on things, and it, and it kind of just builds from there. You know, you, this was my first year going to a convention. First year, and I became a national delegate. Um, for me, I, mean, I just drove down with some friends. Um, there is a fee uh, in North Carolina that you have to pay to become a national delegate. It's $425. Um, so, it, I mean, it can get into the thousands um, for some people, but for me it was close to about eight, nine hundred dollars I'm finishing up my double bachelor's at, at UNC Charlotte um, in finance and political science, and from there I plan on going to law school. Um, I plan on um, taking the LSAT this fall and um, applying to law schools in the spring and kind of go from there. Um, I guess where I, where I plan to go from here is to stay involved. In, in, in the party or politics in general. Um, I think it's important that we all do that. I mean, there's, these things affect our lives, um, affect our pocketbooks, affect, ex, um, affect our, our liberty, ex, ex, affect our decisions in business and in our personal lives. Um, so we all need to do our part, get involved. It doesn't take much. I mean, I showed up for four conventions. That's it, and I became a national delegate, and there's a lot of influence that you can make um, as a national delegate. Charlotte leaders have noted several times that the city and region would pull out the stops for Democrats or Republicans alike. The hoped for economic boost knows no party affiliation. On the eve of the DNC, some of the leaders whose vision helped bring this year's convention to the city looked back on the process of bringing it all home. Susan Burgess in 2008 started going after this convention. And she really sort of represented <clears throat> what I call the spirit of Charlotte that's, that's, that's been uh, historical in terms of leaders 
probably for two or three generations. There's this notion in the city that, you know, we can do everything here. We can do anything here. But Susan believed that the city had a lot to offer. And she enlisted the support of a lot of other folks in our town. And it really was in the spirit of things we have seen happen in Charlotte before. I was the person who was asked early on in the effort, can you call Mayor Venry and Governor uh, Martin to see if they would be willing to sign on to the effort and to write a letter? And I frankly wasn't sure what to expect when I made that call, but uh, Richard Venry said, uh, how quickly can we do this? There's nothing partisan about this. It's an opportunity for Charlotte. That is a spirit of what's in the best interest of this city rather than what's in my best personal partisan interest um, that that matters. Uh, Charlotte really is the main reason that former Republican governor Jim Martin and I wrote letters to Democratic leaders all over the country uh, a couple of years ago advocating their coming here. But the truth is, uh, five years earlier, uh, a group of Republicans and Democrats wrote letters to the Republican Party asking them to bring their convention here that ultimately went to Minneapolis. We got down to the final four. We didn't make the finals. But they did the same thing I'm doing. The, in the history of our city, uh, the biggest, in terms of worldwide publicity, event we've ever had. We'll be on television all over the world, for better or worse. And I think, as my friend Harvey says, they're going to like what they see. This is a really nice city, a really good city. 1998, the Mayor Vendor alluded to three, I call them young Turks, people who weren't that recently out of college, said, we can get a convention in 2000. Um, we made the list of eight, and we had some site visits, and we visited them, and, um, and we failed. We lost. Philadelphia got that convention. But think about that. That failure reverberates today, and uh, I'm sure it inspired Susan Burgess to say, um, we can go get it. It inspired policymakers to say, why did we fail? And not to wallow in that failure and feel sorry for ourselves, but to say, what can we do to be competitive in the future? We need more facilities. We now have the Time Warner Cable Arena in the center city rather than a, a Coliseum out in the suburbs. We need cultural facilities. We need mass transit. We need to create the kind of community that attracts young people and people from all over the country and around the world. I consider us to be one of the great urban laboratories in this country. So it made a lot of sense for the Democrats to want to be in an up and coming city, a city that can remake itself can do, can, can meet adversity, and then handle it by saying we can, we can do better, we can overcome it. And I think that uh, that's one of the reasons we were chosen. Now, of course, as you, as you indicated, uh, from 2008, when we changed the perception of North Carolina from a state that was in the red column, and President Obama won by 14,000 votes, all of a sudden it came like Ohio, and Missouri, and other places where it's a toss-up. I think it's important even for the symbolism of it, that we're here in an American city nominating a president, in this case, renominating a president. And in the process, we're doing the things that Harvey talked about earlier, to try to make some permanent impact on this city and bring to the attention of a whole lot of people the importance of minority businesses being involved in part of the business. Uh, this is the right city to do that. We bring this webcast to a close with some more of the sights in Uptown Charlotte during this week of the convention. Taking our claim at the DNC. Woo! We'll see you again tomorrow inside UNC Charlotte and the 49er Democracy Experience.